of Sticks and Stones. I am your host, Brent Elrod, coming to you from the cozy confines here on the patio at the No Shoes Bar and Grill, deep in the heart of the Republic of Texas. I have a great show lined up for you today. I am pairing a Padron 1926 uh, series uh, number 47 Robusto with the ever popular Glenn Fittich 12 year old single malt scotch. I think it's going to be a great matchup. So, right after this, we are going to pop the cork, cut the stick, and get to toasting. Now, the Padron uh, 1926, number 47. Hey, Padron may be, may be the most well known uh, name in the pr premium cigar world. Uh, this expression, the uh, 1926 uh, number 47 Maduro, is a Robusto, uh, five and a half by 50 on the ring gauge. It is a Puro with filler, binder, and wrapper, all from Nicaragua. On the nose, I get um, some little hints, uh, subtle hints of barnyard and hay, some uh, leather, Maybe just a uh, kind of a touch of espresso and then a very subtle, slight sweetness. Now, I am going to give it a cut with my cigarism hollow cut guillotine cutter. Just want to snip the end off. Just about like that. Cigarism makes wonderful accessories. You need to go check them out. Uh, you can find a link to them in my bio, Cigarism, C-I-G-A-R-S-I-M. Now, on the cold draw. Now, this cold draw, I mean, it's, it's a very, very easy draw. Uh, part of it is uh, due to the guillotine cut. But it's still, it's a very super easy draw. I get uh, leather, I get a little bit of earthiness, uh, maybe kind of uh, some hints of like fresh cut lawn, uh, roasted coffee beans. Just a, kind of a hint of spice. It's, it's a particular spice. It's not like, it's not cinnamon. Hang on just a second here. Almost kind of a nutmeg, kind of a, a, a nutmeg flavor on the cold draw. Mm. I love this stick. It's a great stick. Now, Glenn Fittich, 12-year-old. Uh, brand began in 1886. The distillery is in uh, Dufton, which is in the Speyside region, uh, where it, it gets its water from the area. The Robbie Dew Spring, and I may not be putting the right Scottish accent on Robbie Dew. It's uh, R O B B I E Robbie, and D H U Dew, uh, I guess. All right. In the early days, uh, they were a producer of malt that was used in blended whiskey, but it was later on that they decided to make their own. Uh, 1963, Glenn Fittich became the first to globally market a straight malt or single malt. Until uh, until then, things like that had, had not really been an issue or, or used in marketing. Uh, not saying they were first to ever make it, but they were first to market it that way. Uh, the marketing worked, and today Glenn Fittich is reportedly the world's best-selling single malt. Now, we all know that Johnny Walker is 
probably the most well-known na name in Scotch worldwide. It's it's in all kinds of movies, but the the Walking Man, Johnny Walker, that is a blended Scotch. That is not a single malt. This is single malt. It all comes from from one place. Uh, unlike other brands, uh, Glenfiddich has not pushed itself to expand into uh, into some sort of superior or premium brand, lots of different offerings, lots of, you know, they've pretty much kind of kept their eye on this is what we do. Uh, and I think the, the kind of their thinking behind that is if we do that, we end up out of reach of the common scotch drinker. And it, it becomes a super premium brand that only uh, either people with too much money or m more money than cents would be spending. And they're like, we want to keep it available to the masses. And that's what they've done. You know, this offering, I think, is uh, somewhere around $40, $45 a bottle. And this is their entry. This 12 year is their base. Where, like Johnny Walker, their base is Red Label, which is like three to four years aging. Where this is four times that. Um, and they have they've really remained true to their origins and they are very good at whiskey that you can buy that is delicious and reasonably priced uh, as I said the 12 year old offering that is their their base single malt in the US it is a mash bill of 100% malted barley uh, ABV of 40% so that's 80 proof uh, let's go ahead and glass up some. And I will mention for the audio folks that this is, again, being live streamed on Instagram. Uh, until, I, until I get through with this, once I light, give you my initial impressions, then uh, the live feed's going to go away and uh, we will just go with audio so if you're watching on video you then have to kind of go and listen to the audio so you can hear what I think at the end now the visual on this it is just a beautiful beautiful light gold color <clears throat> all, excuse me almost uh, well think of like a like a ripe wheat field I mean just very light gold it does have really good legs get really good cling to the glass on the nose. Now this is a quintessential space side. I mean it is exactly what if you know anything about the scotch making regions this is what you think of when you think of space side. There is there is no smoke, there is no peat, there is little to any alcohol burn on the nose. Uh, you get an aroma of uh, like uh, orchard fruits, uh, maybe green apples, sweet pears, something along that line. Uh, I get, you know, kind of like a fresh, like spring meadow, you know, just kind of all these aromas of the outdoors, uh, maybe a little floral and uh, some grassiness and, and things like that, just all kind of coming together where you can't really hone in on one of them. You just know that they're there. Mm. There's also uh, there's also like a little bit of lemony citrus uh, in the nose, and just a faint kind of maltiness. Now, how about the mouth? <laughs> the taste doesn't run too far from the nose. I'll tell you what I mean by that after I take another one here. Mm. Glen Fittich is an excellent, excellent scotch. Uh, there is kind of a clean, fresh feel on, on your palate. Uh, you get some, uh, you know, also some like some florally sweetness. Uh, some green fruits, maybe... Uh, let me take another one. Hang on. Mm. 
Yeah, so like in the nose, something along the lines of uh, apples uh, or maybe pears. Pears might be a better uh, a better kind of describer because I always think of pears as having a, a little bit more of a, a subtle flavor than apples do. I like both, but uh, you know, the pears is just a, a very uh, gentle, fruity feel. So I love pear martinis because it's not it's not too biting. That that pear flavor is really smooth on your on your palate. There is also just a hint of spice here. Mm. That is a good beverage. Now, let's go ahead and fire these up. I am using my Rocky Patel Envoy 5 Torch. And for those of you that are on the audio only, if you hear me kind of getting like fainter and louder, uh, it, it is kind of hard to get both the camera and the microphone where it, people aren't looking up my nose in the camera. Uh, and I'm not too far away from the microphone, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to do a nice little uh, balancing act here. Maybe uh, one day when I have uh, proper recording area. Mm. There's very good smoke production coming off the stick. Uh, I'm picking up uh, some, like a little bit of spice, uh, like some uh, semi-sweet chocolate, not overly sweet, just kind of a, a semi-sweet, a uh, little bit of cedar. And like I said, there's, there's kind of a, a touch of, of black pepper on the profile. And just a really, really great volume of smoke. Let's, uh, let's try them here together. Oh yeah, those work really, really well together. Mm. The, uh, the fruitiness and the sweetness uh, from the scotch uh, really uh, blends well with the, the kind of the chocolate coming off the stick. Um, it, it's it, it's a really good marrying together of the two flavors. Then you've got that little subtle uh, kind of maltiness and cedar, and you have some other little things going on in the background. Uh, neither one's really overpowering, and it's just a really good mellow combination. Mm. All right, I am going to burn this down to the halfway mark and I will come back and give you an update. Hey stoners, I am back. Uh, here at the half, it really just seems like this pair is improving as we've approached the halfway mark. Uh, the stick is uh, bringing in uh, some you know, cocoa, spice, it's had the cedar and the pepper. Uh, I it, it, we're getting in some uh, coffee, and it then has also brought in like some roasted peanuts, um, and it's really, really blending well with the, the sweetness and kind of the, the fruitiness of the Glenfiddich. These two are, are just, I, I don't know, they're made for one another, I think. Um, I, I don't know how else to say that I think they're just going wonderfully together. So I am going to burn this down the rest of the way and then I will come back and give you my final thoughts. Hey stoners, I am back. I have uh, emptied the glass and the stick is down to the band. Uh, this has been just a wonderful pairing. Uh, the cocoa and kind of the light sweetness on the stick has mixed very well with the fruitiness and the spirit. Uh, neither one was uh, overpowering. Uh, they just kind of melded together very well. They were both smooth and easy to enjoy. Uh, and, and 
And really both of them kind of had a, a fairly short finish. So it didn't take you very long after you, you know, take a puff or take a drink that your palate was ready for the next one. Um, I cannot speak highly enough of the uh, Padron 1926. Uh, I think there's, I had two drawbacks. Number one, for no reason, while I had it in my mouth at the beginning of the show, I had maybe a half inch, three quarters of an inch ash, and the ash just fell off in my lap. And I was like, what the hell is this? This is a Padron. So, you know, I had to dust myself off. It's, it's, it's kind of steamy here in Texas, so a little bit of it stuck to me. I was like, damn it. But that doesn't take anything away from the cigar. I'm, I'm saying that in jest. The other thing is this is not a budget-friendly stick. Uh, you're going to pay, if you're trying to buy a box, you're, you're going to be paying you know, like $400, $450 for a box. They are, uh, they are some pricey cigars, but they are definitely one that you want to try and maybe you know keep one in your humidor for a special occasion or, or something like that because they are an excellent, excellent stick. The Glenfiddich is a wonderful scotch. It is easy drinking, and it is also budget-friendly. You're going to pay about, I don't know, 40 bucks for a fit, and you're definitely getting your $40 worth out of it. That is for sure. Uh, I would give the stick, I'd give it a 98 out of 100 matchsticks. I mean, this is damn near perfect. It is, it is just a wonderful, wonderful stick. Uh, I would give the Spirit... I would give the Glenfiddich like a 91, 92 uh, uh, on uh, Whiskey Stones out of 100. Um, and, it, it, you know, I mean, I, I, could, I could make the case for even going higher. Uh, it, it isn't overly complex, but it is just very, very enjoyable. So it's hard to push it up to those upper ranks, but at the same time, you don't want to take too much away from it. So I recommend you give both of these... A try. Uh, that is it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. Be sure to hit like, subscribe, share, notify, especially share. Share this on your Facebook, your Instagram. I mean, we can get six degrees of separation and I could really, really launch off uh, with just some, some shares. They don't cost you anything, right? Uh, leave me comments. Let me know your thoughts. I love hearing from you. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook. The, uh, the podcast is, is hosted on Podbean, but then I carry to Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, basically all of it. So you can find me pretty much anywhere. Until we get to be together again, keep your sticks dry, your stones cold, and have a great day.